Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I will be providing my review of Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. Uh, this will be a spoiler-free review, so I will not get into the, the, the plot twist necessarily in specifics. Um, what I'll say for this book is, boy, is it a different type of book. I mean, it, it has a mystery element to it, but it is almost more thriller horror in its design than it is traditional murder mystery. With your traditional murder mystery, you have a murder. Oh my goodness, we need to investigate who did the murder. And then you have to go through and look at all the facts. And then uh, maybe there's another murder or two in there. And then I'll oh, catch the murderer. Well, this book, it starts out, you know how many people are going to be in this house. And you know that the poem talks about them being ticked off one by one, and all you can think of is who will be remaining, and will anyone survive or not, or will the title be real, and really there will be none left. And so it creates this epic amount of suspense, and it truly builds and builds and builds as the book goes on. And it's just a genius way to build tension and sus suspense in the book. Um, uh, and you never really see the killings happen. You only see their aftermath. And so it's really impressive how on the edge of the, your seat the audience is. Um, uh, everyone I talked to, everyone I talked to was like, oh, you got to read it, and then there were none. You got to read it, and then there were none. That's her best book. And I was like, mm, really? Can it really be better than, you know, Crooked House or ABC Murders, which were both fantastic? And I read this, and I was like, I see why everyone likes it. I'll be honest, I love this book, but it's not my favorite, because it's, it's technically amazing, brilliant writing. It's, it totally makes sense why this has become a play that has gone around to many theaters. My local theater was playing the play once. Um, I didn't get to go see it, sadly, but uh, they, were, they were doing it, so it's, it's really popular. If you go on Goodreads, this is her most uh, reviewed book by far. I don't know if this is her best-selling single book, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is. And so it's so popular, and I get why it is popular. It's just not my style. Her Praro novels are much more my speed. Her books like Crooked House are much more intriguing to me as a mystery than a book like this. Yet, even though this is not my style, this delves into the horror and th I would say more into the thriller vibe, it still works really well. She is amazing at her craft and I needed to find out who, who was the murderer and Boy, let me tell you, I was wrong about who the murderer was in this book. I was like, what? What? I did not see that coming at all. It was a truly great twist. And I won't, that will, that will be all I say about the twist there. But, pff, blew my mind. Um, another thing I could say about this book is it really struggled to introduce the characters at the beginning. She really was just throwing them all in. And there are, I think there are other uh, books and other mystery stories that have a big ensemble cast that do a much better job of introducing all the characters at the beginning. The one I always go to is Knives Out. Knives Out has a huge cast, and yet they're so easily distinguishable. Now, that's a movie as opposed to a book, and I don't know whether or not if that was in book form, if it would be e it would, if it would work the same, but... At the beginning, I really was kind of feeling the jumble of the characters, and it wasn't until some of them were getting picked off that I was able to distinguish them and understand, okay, this is this character, this is this character. There were certain characters that had certain distinguishable qualities that made me think, oh, that's a bad, that's a bad guy, I need to look out for them, or that's a, that's a good guy, I need to, 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 to cheer for him, or something. And so, uh, there were... Uh, there were times where I could distinguish some of them, but when there are ten ca main characters in the book at the beginning, it can be kind of hard. It wasn't until the very end that I finally understood all of them. And I got to the end of the book, and I was like, really? That's it? And then I read like the little after-the-end thing, and I was like, whoa, that's brilliant. So definitely read the full book when you read this. Um, one of my favorite characters was the judge because he essentially took on the role 
of the Sherlock type character of the the detective. He himself was not a detective and he wasn't taking complete charge, but he was the one who's like, okay, I know how mysteries work. I know how, how to use evidence, how to use logic. And I liked the logical deductions that he makes throughout the book. Um, uh, also the character of Philip and I'm blanking on his last name. Uh, he was interesting to me, but not too interesting. Uh, the characters are not what drives this book. The suspense drives the book. And as the characters are picked off one by one by one, you just are like, oh my goodness, this is horrifying. And the murders become more and more gruesome. And you realize that the murders, the murders are connected to the, to the crimes that are established at the beginning of the book. And I was just like, this is a, this is really interesting. I will say this. There is an element of the Saw movies in this book, where in the Saw movies, they're kind of, um, in some of the movies, punishing the people for their acts, and at the same time, they're also kind of making them go through these crazy things uh, to see whether they live or not. And in this book, the murderer is intending to murder everyone, but he's kind of uh, looking to see how it will unfold, what, what, what it will entail. And so... Oh, this is it was, it's it's such a satisfying ending, and it makes you go what? And I want to reread the book just to find out what was that. That was brilliant. So overall, this is a very good book. I still would personally put Crooked House and ABC Murders above it, and then this is on the level that's amazing but not the best, where it's with. Uh, what I would put something like uh, Death on the Nile and Cards on the Table, uh, two also great books, uh, but it is much better than uh, Five Little Pigs or Hercule Poirot's Christmas, both of which were good books, but I thought were subpar for, for Agatha Christie. Um, so yeah, overall, really enjoyed this book. Really, really well done. Not my personal taste, but if you like thrillers, you might love this book. Um, and it's also, of course, got plenty of mystery. Uh, and it's a pretty short read. It's a very quick read, and it propels really fast. And as the murders start, you start going, okay, okay, this is ramping up. So I would give this about a 9.0 out of 10. Um, not amazing, amazing, but really, really well done. So I think you get the, the gist. So if you've read this book, let me know down in the comments section. On my Facebook page, this was the most commented and liked review I've ever had. And I was like, really? This one is? So people are interested in this one, with at least in my friend circles. So let me know down in the comments section here what you thought of this book, if you really enjoyed it. If you knew who the murderer was, let me know. Uh, be careful if you're reading the comments. Uh, about spoilers. I, I'll, I, I won't post any, but someone else might, so be careful. Uh, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel. I have many Agatha Christie book reviews here. Uh, and until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.